In downtown Sanford, right by City Hall, where you can see the flood water still covering a significant portion of the road, but it has gone down significantly. Let me give you an idea. These flood waters at one point last week stretched all the way down this block to that corner, but it's not going down fast enough for some. In a neighborhood about 15 minutes from here, people are still using boats to get to their homes. As the water recedes, Sanford's waterfront is slowly starting to emerge. You can finally see the marina driving on a makeshift road made of dirt and gravel to get there. While most neighborhoods are getting back to normal, some are still trapped. I would say probably a lot of people, maybe 50% of the people ha had to move out. Robert Strader, a 70-year-old retiree, has been acting as the neighborhood's water taxi. He brought us along to get a better look. It's now been three weeks since the hurricane, and this is still the only way some people are getting to their homes, taking boats in and out to get essentials. They say it's going by slowly as the water goes down, but every inch makes a difference. The water is deeper than two feet in some areas, and some homes have had eight inches of flooding. People still have to use water sparingly since wells and septic tanks have been damaged. After about five rides, Strader calls it a night. I can't, I can't do this at night with the alligators. I mean, we got alligator snakes and this and that and the other leeches. At Sanford's only hospital, water still fills part of the parking lot. From a recent Harvard study, a warning that HCA Florida Lake Monroe Hospital could flood if another hurricane hits, though the hospital insists it's prepared to handle it. And as this water slowly recedes, we're starting to get an idea of what kind of mess will be left behind all this dirt and debris underneath the water. But it'll take a lot longer before the city truly knows how much cleanup they'll have on their hands because they'll need to wait until the water is completely gone. But to give you more of an idea of that timeline, I'm going to pass it directly to Storm Team Meteorologist Brooks Gardner. Brooks? Connor, great report there. Yes, and unfortunately, the river will be very slow to fall. This is a visualization as we go through the future of where some of the waters in those neighborhoods are now and where they'll be as we head toward Halloween in the 1st of November. Just a slow recession where there will still likely be some water on the streets as we head toward November 3rd, but it just won't be quite as deep. It may be quite navigable with, with a truck. It looks like we may have flooding though on the rivers as late as Thanksgiving. It's just not going to be a major flood. So remember, the St. John's flows from south to north, and so the water starts above Lake Harney and then heads up toward Astor. There are glimmers of hope, though, as far as these river levels go. All of the water from Hurricane Ian. Above Lake Harney, it is expected to remain in major flood, unfortunately, for a while. So there's a lot of water yet that has to go downstream. However, due to the flow in Sanford, it's expected to drop just below major flood stage by tomorrow night. So that means that inundation in homes along Lake Monroe may start to go down a little bit. That's good news. Near DeLand, it's expected to fall below major flood stage as soon as Monday. In Astor, it looks like it's already fallen below the major flood stage of four feet, just about a tenth of an inch. So hope on the St. John's, but it's going to take a few more weeks before conditions improve for good. Right now, it's 65 degrees in Orlando, 64 in Sanford, 52 in Gainesville. We're on the way to another chilly night, just not as cold as it was last night, and a big warming trend ahead with a spectacular weekend coming our way. I'll show you how long this beautiful pattern will last when our next chance of rain hits and when temperatures will warm back to those Florida highs in the upper 80s.